Hey, welcome back. We're going to take a look at a video here. We're going to use file saving with INI initialization files. And we're going to use lists. And we're going to use a few little list commands. So we can do this awesome task of picking up and moving the burgers. Put them in a position. And I hit save. It's going to save their locations. And then if I delete the food and I click load, it's going to go to that file, load up where everything was, and put it back. And so we're going to be saving and reading using lists, which is a really popular starting point with uh, files because it's going to probably introduce you to how you can convert lists into this string. So let's get started on it. So let's show you what we got going here. You'll see here in my load and save button, I'm actually going to be calling a script called load burger locations. And in the save button, save burger locations. Now to make this one easy, I'm actually only saving the X position of the burgers. So I'm always sort of putting the burgers just in a line for now. When we go to actually example four, I'll save the type of object and the Y and the X position. So you could jump to that one if you're already a bit pro. Um, you'll see here in my save button, I'm just calling the script save burger locations, right? Commented out the others there. Now, let's see what I've got going here. I'm going to, no, I'm not going to use that. Let's just jump right to that save button and see how it works. So when I hit the save button, I'm hitting save burger locations. And my goal here is I want to create an INI file. Now, the INI file that I create, I want it to look something like this, right? Where you have a section, a key, and then some data. But the problem here is if I have three burgers, 10 burgers, eight burgers, I don't want to make eight keys. I don't want to call it like burger one, burger two, burger three, burger four, burger five. What happens if you had 80 burgers? You certainly don't want to have 80 lines here for 80 different keys. There has to be a better way. And this better way is using lists. And so what I'm going to be able to do is basically make something that eventually looks like this. I'm going to have a section called burgers, one key value called X positions, and this jumbled up mess of data here is actually a list data structure that's being converted to a string. So somehow that translates to a couple of the burgers X positions. And I mean, you can almost see the pattern in there, right? You know, something is going on that you can almost tell. So let's go see how we get this to take place. Okay, not too hard. So let's take a peek here. Save positions is hit. I know I have some burgers on the screen. Let's see how we do this. First thing I do is I find out how many burgers I have. So instance number burger. If none exist, I just get out of here. Now maybe you decide to do something different. I'm just leaving. Create a list, add to the X position of each, sorry, add the X position of each burger to it. Now if you haven't gone through our loop lessons and you haven't gone through the list lesson, you know, this may be a little hard for you, right? That's why it's always good to sort of go in order. So you may want to go back and look at those, you know, so you have that solid. But basically here, I'm going to make a list. So list X, I create a list. I'm going to use a loop here and go from burger zero all the way up to the number of burgers. And what I do in this loop is I grab out that burger. So, you know, burger zero. Then the next loop, it'll go burger one, then burger two, and burger three. And it's going to basically grab every single burger by the time this loop finishes running. And it will have added it to my list. Now, what am I actually adding to the list? I'm not adding the burger. Remember, this is the ID of the burger. All right? That's what instance find grabs for you. What I'm going to add to my list with DS list add, name the list, and I add that particular burger's X position. All right? So the ID of the burger dot X. So if the uh, burger's at 500 to my list, I add 500. Now after this finishes cycling, my list is just a list of numbers, right? An X position for each burger. Now here comes the, uh, the game maker magic. This list has a nice command in it called DS list write. And what this does is if you give it a list, so I give it list X, which was a list that I filled, it'll actually convert it to that mess that you just saw. 
So this was a short list, so that's pretty short. If you had 80 burgers, that would obviously be a lot longer. But basically, it does its own little system of converting that to some text. Now, you don't have to be able to decode it yourself, right? GameMaker will have a command to decode it. But that's what that to string method, or sorry, that's what that list write method does for you. And it sends you back the list as a string, even if it's a long one. I show the message just to show you that it's working. So that's that pop-up you see when I run it. And now I'm in finished with the list, right? So I destroy the list. I've still got list to string though, right? I still have my string, but you can get rid of the list at this point. Don't let lists live on, right? They start to fill memory. And then here comes the big I and I file stuff. And if you work from last day's uh, little video, you'll see it's pretty simple. I open up an I and I file called a burgers. I make a section called burgers. I make a uh, key called X positions. And the data that I put in is list as string. Hence, write a string. Then I close the file. And that is what I ended up getting. Okay. I ended up getting that, right? Burgers, X positions, and the data. Burger, X positions, the data. Now, loading up. Now that I got that data in there, and that wasn't that bad, right? Just a couple lines. Let's actually look at the load up of this data. So in the load up, let's load burger locations. And that's when I press the key. And you're going to see it's basically very similar, but pretty well backwards, right? What I have to do here. So let's try to open the file. So I and I open, burgers I and I. I go to read a value, right? So burger section, the key X positions, and a default value of NA. And we'll explain this in a bit. So let's say it's the first time and there's nothing in this I and I file, or maybe that I and I file isn't even there. What's going to happen when I try to grab burger section X positions? If it's not there, it'll send back the default, NA. Okay? And then I close the file. Now, I know there is stuff in the file, so, you know, I should have my list in the form of a string there. Here I do a quick check. If lifts the string is the default value of NA, I'm just going to write a little error here. Key not found. You better handle this, right? So you'd have your own code here to handle an error like that, you know? Something has to be done. And then I just exit out. Let's assume everything is good and it's not NA. I keep going down. I make a list, I call it list X again, and I use this command or script here, DS list read. This is the opposite of DS list write. When you do DS list write, it takes a list, puts it into one string. When you do DS list read, you give it a list, you give it a string, and remember, that's just what we read from the I and I file, that big long mess. And false is if uh, it's supposed to be compatible with the last version of GameMaker. So, I mean, if you're just using GameMaker Studio, you can always be putting false there <clears throat> for now. If you put true there, it tries to make it compatible with the older GameMaker version. Because I guess it saved it differently with the uh, write command. Now, once you've done this, it takes a string, decodes it, and it makes the list out of it. So what you have now is you have a normal list, a normal DS list, all properly done, you know, slot 0, slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, holding the data. So that's great. So now that we have this list, basically the task is take a list of X positions, and at each of those X positions, make a burger. So here's some standard list code here. I find the size of the list with DS list size, make a for loop, go from zero to the end of that list value, and read the X value out of the list. X value is DS list, hey, find me the value from this list, slot number K, right, which will be zero the first time, one the next time, two the next time, right, it cycles through. And then instance create at X value, comma 64, notice I didn't do the Y values, right? So that's why I'm always loading them up on just the same line, Y equals 64, and make a burger.
And then I'm all done with that list. DS list destroy the list. And that's it. No more code after that. That's pretty well the loading up. Now this system is great. I did it just for burger, but you'll see in my grid example, I have it set up so it does it for any type of object. It'll remember all the objects in the room, save their positions, and load them up again fine. So that's some pretty powerful stuff for those that like to save items, and it's especially great using a list. Okay, so those main commands are with the list that really let this work is DS list read when you want to read that value out, and the other big one was DS list write when you want to convert a list to just one single long string. And that's really it. Uh, remember, these projects are all saved at the website if you want to grab this code and test all this stuff out. Until then, hopefully that gives you some ideas. Um, but keep watching uh, the next two videos on this, especially the one with the grid. Great.